is white privilege. You're denying that there is racism. And you can't be in denial anymore. No, and um, history is going to history is going to remember who was on what side of this argument. And unlike, and I was just having this conversation with my wife. Unlike in previous generations, when people would say things or do things, we would make excuses. Oh well, Grandpa comes from a different era. That was acceptable when Grandpa. That's no longer acceptable, and it's not going to be acceptable because in this day and age, you cannot. Grandpa didn't have the internet. Grandpa didn't have ways of getting new information so readily available to him as we do now. So to just fall back on that is I came from a different generation is not going to be an excuse anymore. People are tired of allowing this to linger with excuses just because you were from a different generation. That's what keeps it alive because that generation teaches the next generation and has an effect on their kids, their grandkids, so on and so forth down the line. Yeah, it's been interesting to see, as you're saying, that change, because I've been teaching for 20 years, and I truly do believe that kids nowadays, you know, do see the color and recognize the diversity and are okay with it. And there was, I remember, a time teaching where it was the thing to say, well, I don't see color. And that has changed, you know, within my 20 years of teaching. Yeah, it's not, like I said earlier, it's not that you shouldn't see it. It's that you shouldn't react to it. In, in, not react to it, because, again, if you just don't react at all, then you're, again, ignoring the issue. You shouldn't be judging the person by a single quality like that. That should not factor into how you perceive that person to be. Their actions, their beliefs, their everything else should, yes, but... To not to not see it would be insane. You just shouldn't be treating them differently because of it. Right. You should be treating them as an individual. Yes. They're a person. Yes. This is a quality of that person or a aspect of this person, but that doesn't that doesn't group them into a specific box in terms of their actions. Because it does, in fact, group them into a box, though, when we're talking about things like police brutality. They are more likely to see it than I am, period. And here's another big thing. Um, you had mentioned in a text, you know, we should mention what we can do to help as, as people who are clearly not affected by this in the same way, being that we're both white. We can shut up and listen to people. That's what we, That's the biggest thing we can do. We can stop trying to tell other people what should be offensive to them. What shouldn't be offensive to them? What should be considered racism? What shouldn't be considered racism? Listen to what they're saying. That's the biggest thing we can do. And that's what needs to happen because it's not like, I mean, Black Lives Matter started in 2013 at the acquittal of Trayvon Martin's murder who went free, George Zimmerman who went free. And that's when the movement started in 2013. That was seven years ago. And that's not even the first time that we should have been listening. I mean, these riots and protests have been going on forever, I think. Absolutely. People have gone on my Facebook page to say, this is just like the 77 riots. And they don't understand that that's not... Your argument is actually against your point. Your point is to say that this shouldn't be happening because we've already gone through this, but it's still happening and we've already gone through this. Yeah. And 77 to 2020, something should have changed. Yes. Oh, something needs to change. And I'm hoping that this will be the time. And to your point, we need to listen as individuals. It's not just enough to say, well, the government needs to listen, like they need to listen. No, you personally, because it's not going to change in the upper governments, the system isn't going to change unless we listen and understand what they are saying. Because once we figure out and actually listen with an open heart and not be judgmental or defensive, then that's when the ideas of, Hey, how, what can I do to better support 
the Black Lives Matter movement? What can I do in my personal life to end racism? What can I do to accept my white privilege? Like, it starts with the individual, and I really do hope that the purpose of this podcast is to find what you personally can do to change um, because something has to happen because we cannot continue like this. No, of course we can't. It's, it's not it's not right to a segment of the population. It's not right to the to to uh, to anybody because. Yes, I have white privilege, it's absolutely 100 percent true. But at what point does that start to get withered away, too? Because we're not all equal. At what point do we all start losing? And I'd, I'd make the argument about 150, 200, 300, 400 years ago is when that started. If we're all not equal as our... our, I, the, the founding of the country was on equal, but we all know that wasn't true, right? Because there was slavery. However, the idea of that being expanded out to everyone that's here should be the goal. They made mistakes back then. Okay, but we should stop. Why are we continuing to make the same mistakes? And yes, I understand that the, we, we've gotten rid of slavery and the civil rights movement has happened, and we still haven't come far enough. No, we have not. The value of everyone's life is not equal. No, it's not. It's not, and we shouldn't get to the point where we have violence over this issue. And I'm not, I'm not condoning or condemning the people who are doing that. What I'm saying is we shouldn't even have to get to that point. We sh this should have been ended before it even gets to the point where people would feel they need to get to that point. But we're nowhere near that. I feel we're, in, we're moving in the right direction right now. A lot more people are starting to see things that way, that the same way I do. So I feel like we're moving in a, in a good direction, but... You know, one of the problems with moving in a good direction is many times people start to get complacent with that fact, especially if it's not, especially if it is someone like me who it doesn't personally affect on a daily basis. Yeah, I also am hopeful that things are taking a more positive step. And to your point, it, it does worry me that now people will be like, oh, well, this has changed. Uh, case in point, I have received quite a few emails from uh, companies, you know, that I shop with and through like Under Armour, uh, Dollar Shave Club, and they each have put out emails to their uh, customers and said, we support Black Lives Matter. And they talk about what they're doing in their company and the policies that they are now changing. And I do not remember seeing that any time previous. It is now that I'm seeing companies, large companies, like instituting some kind of change, which I think is very, very important. Yeah, I would agree. I was amazed when um, I turned on the fire stick and the banner on the Amazon fire stick was Black Lives Matter. I was even more amazed when Jeff Bezos, who's full disclosure, I don't like him. I, I mean, I don't know him personally, but I do not like his business practice. I don't like how he treats his workers. But Give credit where credit is due. He received an email from someone saying, well, if you're going to keep that, I'm never shopping with you again. He And his response to the email was, okay, so don't shop with me ever again. It's not, this is, it's not a negotiable point. I'm not, I'm not going to change my stance on this because you don't like it. Now, does he really believe that or not? I don't know. But it doesn't really matter because that's the persona he's putting out, right? So that's what people are – I mean, it does matter if he does believe it or not. But even if he doesn't truly believe it, that – that if that influences a hundred people that did what it's intended to do for the movement itself. Exactly. And other companies could look to that as an example and say, all right, I could probably live and, you know, without those customers. Yeah, they probably could. I mean, it's when, when Colin Kaepernick took a knee, I f I forget who was it Nike that continued to use him in, in their sponsorship deals. I think it was Nike. Yeah, I think so. And they they got lambasted. Yes. By people who said, "Well, he was kneeling. I'm never going to buy from you again." And their sales skyrocketed because of it. Yes, it did. Their scales went up. They didn't go down. With all the people who were protesting the idea of him being there, it didn't hurt their business. Mm -hmm. If only we would have listened 
when Kopernik. Well, but mean, of course. I was in full support of that. And again, it's so infuriating that the dialogue gets changed by... It gets hijacked. It does. The, di- every the narrative gets time. hijacked. It's not that it gets changed because change isn't necessarily bad because it could change from what we're talking about to something equally as bad in the same realm. That's not what happens. It gets hijacked and pulled right out of that realm so that we can start talking about flags instead. Yeah. Or troops. Oh, my gosh. I did not even understand that leap that they went. Well, the worst part about that was it was a man in the military who told him to kneel. That gets lost in the discussion. That he was taking a seat and someone who was in the military said to him, well, that's kind of disrespectful. What we do to honor our fallen brothers is we take a knee. Maybe you should do that. And the point that he was, you know, making about police brutality on blacks completely got derailed. Of course it did. And it it started up at the top. Our our president derailed it by going after the NFL when it happened. And that trickles down to everyone else. And that's one thing that I think, you know, again, turning it inward, looking at your, you know, self-reflection can we listen without taking offense? Can we not get defensive? Can we not say, well, all those protesters were rioting and, you know, looting stores and that's bad. Like, I understand that rioting and looting is bad. The point is the protests about police brutality against black people and people of color. That is the narrative that we need to stay focused on. Just like with the Copernic thing. Well, now they don't like our troops. They're not supporting America. It's about the flag. No, the point is specifically police brutality against blacks. Like we need to not deflect. We need to listen, accept, and not come up with these Well, this and this and this. No, don't say well, don't say but. Just accept what you are hearing and stay focused on that dialogue. Yeah, and if we do that, then we can avoid the riots. So um, I'm not going to reiterate everything Trevor Noah said, but if you're a friend of mine on Facebook, you can look back on my timeline. I posted his his uh, conversation about it. He does go into the whole social contract and he does talk about the riots and he has a a unique perspective because he grew up in South Africa during apartheid with a a white father and a black mother. So, you know, he understands racism. He he understands how that works. So um, on a different, different level than us, but it's not so different that it can't be brought to our discussion. Um, He's also lived in America for quite a while now too. So, to bring this actually back to Star Trek, too, so because we, we would like to keep some of this conversation to Star Trek. The the best example of that that we have of all of this, the best total example, would be the DS9 episode. Because we see that they're not ready for a female author and definitely not ready for a person of color as an author. And that causes a lot of problems. And in the very beginning of the episode, we see the police treating him wrong, not wanting to give him back his, his uh, piece of art simply because he, he, they can't believe that he's an author. He says, I work here. What are you, a janitor? Janitors don't dress that nice. Yeah, and we'll, you know, let you off with a warning. I, I'm sorry. A warning for what? It just was. Well, but that, yeah. that is how a lot of places were yeah. in the 1950s. Yeah. They're not so different now either, but... And watch your tone. Like, uh, he did not have a tone at all. Like, it is. it is, And I, I think that DS9 is the best example out of the four um, as well. Because not only couldn't we have the female and the black writer, but the fact that his story was about a black hero, like, that was completely unacceptable. And they had to do the little twist. Well, maybe it was a dream. And even that didn't work. 
because then the publisher still refused to publish it. Now, 